what did this woman really see? Was it hallucination, imagination, or a bona fide apparition? It was here that began a chain of events which bewildered the hardest of skeptics and changed the destiny of one woman's life. Every time I've seen him, he's always been cross-legged. He's got a grayish, he looks like he's a corpse. It looks like a corpse. And he's got a grayish uh, tone to him and he's wearing a red flannel shirt and he's, his shirt is tucked in, his pants are high waters and they're like, um, the old gasoline, gas attendant's pants. I mean, I felt this force pushing my back, like a huge hand just pushing, pushing, pushing my back. I witnessed that, right? And you were right there. For the first time, an American parapsychologist and his crew had stumbled upon what may well be considered one of the greatest hauntings ever documented on videotape. But their analysis of the first, um, I guess, liquid was that it was human blood mixed with iodine, high copper co content. It was human male blood. And um, there was, it was very rust, a lot of rust in it, oxidation, and it also, um, see, it was very old. So we're left with a case of uh, incredible uniqueness, and one that I feel will probably, um, under, with greater scrutiny and analysis, uh, stand up as being um, one of the most unique cases that we've investigated, at least on this coast, in the last uh, 22 years. Uh, I was shooting behind, over my shoulder, maybe the third, into the third frame, all of a sudden, it it just pulled out of my hand. Nothing, I, could, I couldn't feel anything on my hands, but I could feel the camera being, and I hold a camera pretty, pretty steady when I'm shooting that slow shutter speed. So I, I had on it. It's like, it's like I grabbed that out of my hand. I'm not kidding, so grabbed the whole thing out of my hand. What caused this 35 millimeter camera to rock back and forth in full view of witnesses? Those who saw it swear no one was touching the table and there was no vibration of the floor whatsoever. There are no trucks or any traffic going by. It's a residential area. Okay, good, good. Hey, this is Jackie. It's uh, 10.30 Monday morning. Uh, I got a picture of it. I think I got about three or four good shots of it. It's going around on the kitchen ceiling, and there's a light film of smoke up there, and I don't know where the smoke is coming from, but I got the lights that have been zooming around. There's been light beams that on the dancing around on the ceiling, and then there was also a shape form. What are these strange comets of light captured on both still and videotape? Scientists say they're unexplainable. The character of the light was basically the same, and the kind of trajectory it followed was the same, and in each case, there was no indication of any kind of a background shadow associated with the lights, and I found that uh, quite unique. These amazing images were videotaped by cameraman Barry Conrad. They may prove to be among the most startling pieces of evidence yet supporting the reality of ghosts. At the house in San Pedro, did something grab from your hands a camera that you could not visually see? Yes. Are these people telling the truth? Extensive voice stress analysis proved that they were. All three of them present definitely answered the questions truthfully. Um, I tried to act while I was giving the test. As you can see on this tape, that I was not one way or the other, trying to be right in the middle, trying to be a skeptic, trying to, you know, you tell me if you believe it, make me believe it, try and trick my machine. It's a very high technical electronic piece of equipment. Can't be fooled. And these people answered the questions all truthfully, as far as I'm concerned. The attic. The terrifying events that transpired here have created a storm of controversy among investigators of the paranormal. I felt something behind me, so I kind of like, I, I turned real quick, and as I turned, there was a head, and it was just a head, and it was coming for me, right towards me, and I just freaked and just fell. It's the kind of thing you always read about, but you think it's never going to happen to you. But it did happen. Hello? What's wrong? What happened? All right. I told you, get down, get, get down! This was the most frightening event of all. 
Something had hung photographer Jeff Wheatcraft in the attic. Come on now, Jeff, what happened? Put something around my neck. Oh, shit. Oh, my Look at God. His neck. Jeff, get down. Get down oh, right now. Oh, my God. I'm really going to Please, get down. Please. What is this, Gary? What is this? I don't know. Just get down. The destructive potential of the apparition was no longer in question. Here you go, buddy. Here you go. What the hell Are you okay, buddy? Oh, Shit. my God. Look at his neck. Look, Jeff, look, come on. what's behind your neck? I don't know. What's on my come neck? On, come on, come on, come on. A piece of rope. Oh, shit. Gary, get down out of there, buddy. You Can you find my glasses? Gary. Jeff. Look at this. Jeff. Look at this. Turn the camera. Jeff, are you okay? Jeff. I'm fine. Jeff, tell me what happened, buddy. Well, I don't know, Gary. I told Gary that there was nothing happening up there, and he turned around and came. He was coming this way. All of a sudden, I feel, feel this thing around my neck, and it's got me hanging, hanging, and it's pulling on my leg. I was a tremendous skeptic, I guess, but what happened to me was uh, something way beyond what I'd ever thought that, that, that could possibly happen. It would have definitely killed me. It would have definitely killed me. I feel that. I really feel that now. All of a sudden, I had this thing around my neck, and it's pulling me like this, up and hooks me on something. Gary had to take me off. you've just witnessed have become recognized as the best documented evidence of the supernatural. For further information about this program, please contact American Video Features, 4285 Tahunga Avenue, North Hollywood, California, 91604, or phone 818-769-8046. I'm getting scared, Barry. I can't stay here. I don't know what I'm going to do. There were enough of you that had raised vibration in that house at the time to get that ghost going. You understand that for a ghost to operate, so to speak, he has to be energized. He takes your ectoplasm and feeds himself with it. Their analysis of the first, um, I guess, liquid was that it was human blood mixed with iodine, high copper co content. It was human male blood. Every time I've seen him, He's always been cross-legged. He's got a grayish, he looks like he's a corpse. It looks like a corpse.
seem to be getting frequently are balls of light, corpuscular masses of light, dimensional in the sense that they're not flat, flying about the room, or arcs of light, as we've gotten in the entity case, uh, which seem to be like trails of light. And in each case, there was no indication of any kind of a background shadow associated with the lights, and I found that uh, quite unique. As far as the VSA is concerned, these people are truthful. Um, I have to believe my equipment, so that makes me lean definitely toward more the side of Yes, there are ghosts. Yes, there are aberrations. Before the incident in San Pedro, I was definitely a skeptic, yes. It's the kind of thing you always read about, but you think it's never going to happen to you. But it did happen. Shoo! What's wrong? What happened? All right. I told you, get down, get, get down! My neck was tightened, tightened, and brought against the attic rafter. The look on his face was total fear and total fright, and I picked that up in his stress levels on his test because they were very high. So he definitely uh, experienced something. Another particular event that occurred that was quite unusual is that when Barry Conway was filming in the kitchen um, one evening, something, for lack of a better term, knocked him unconscious. Watch, he's going to pass out. Sit the camera down. Sit the camera yeah, sit down. Him down. Sit him down. Sit him down. Sit him down. Sit him down. It's fearful of something. It doesn't want you to be here. What's going to happen next? What's it going to do to me? I know that it, that it is following me. Um, I don't know that it's following me every single place I go or every errand I run, but I do have a, a feeling now that it is here. During the early part of October 1989, Jackie Hernandez moved out of her Southern California home after an attempt by the ghost to smother her. Hoping to have escaped the horrors that she experienced there, Jackie and her two small children moved into this small mobile home near Weldon, California, nearly 300 miles away traumatic it really is and it's uh it's hard to, to live it's, it's it's hard to, to be normal to act normal uh it's hard to go through your daily routine not knowing what's going to happen next knowing what could happen next uh knowing the the full force and the full power of of this phenomenon relieved that she no longer would have to fear the supernatural forces that had disrupted her life Strange events started reoccurring in March 1990. Bizarre scratching noises seemed to originate from the small wooden storage shed located behind the house. She began to see the same comets of light flying around that she had observed in San Pedro. And then one day, while trying to move a widescreen TV from the storage shed to the house, two new witnesses, a married couple who lived next door, observed an evil-looking apparition, the face of an old man the same ghost that Jackie had reported 300 miles away. There could only be one explanation for this strange turn of events. The entity had followed her. To me, he looked like an old man with, with real mean eyes. That, that was the thing that got me was the eyes. It was just all of a sudden the face was real clear that I could see from the opposite end of the TV. And it was just real clear, but his eyes were just staring straight at me. And he was, 
Just real, like you said, evil looking. These eyes were evil. That's all you could say. On the evening of April 13th, 1990, Barry Conrad and Jeff Wheatcraft, the photographers who had been documenting the activities of the poltergeist since August 1989, traveled to Weldon. Within a brief span of time, the ghost became extremely active. An invisible force began to toy with Wheatcraft's camcorder while the unit was locked down on its tripod base. When I first set it up, I framed it directly inside of the shed. We set it up on a tripod, we walked away from it, we came in the house. After we were in the house, uh, well, 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes, whatever it was, we were looking out the window and it appeared to me like the camera was panned there is. Towards, towards us, us, which meant that it would have to be panned towards the left. Well, I remember locking the camera down. It's got two locks on it, friction mount locks, and I locked them both down. There's no way that thing could be moved, you know, unless it was forced in some manner. Within moments, Barry Conrad captured on video another strange glowing red light traveling almost 80 miles an hour towards the shed. session in the home that same night, the entity finally seemed to communicate with a small group, but not without displaying an awesome power. During the session, Jeff Wheatcraft, who had been hung in the attic of the San Pedro home several months before, was attacked again in full view of witnesses. Jeff was physically levitated and hurled backwards against the trailer wall by an invisible power. It spelled out my name, J-E-F-F, -F, and immediately after that, it pushed me against the wall, just forced me, threw me against the wall. Chair and all. It hit my chest and threw me back against the wall. There's no way Jeff could have thrown himself against that wall. I actually saw him get picked up and thrown, I mean literally just thrown against the wall at, with, with for unbelievable force and by something that I didn't even see. I didn't believe in any supernatural things on earth and I thought all those movies like The Entity and stuff were all just fiction. <laughs> then stuff started happening in front of me and it really made me believe. And we heard three knocks very loud in the baby's bedroom and it was like a force was trying to get out. And it was just, it would go three times and it would stop and it would go three more times. And I was freaked out. I did not want to be in the house at the time. From that day on, from that face, since we saw it in the TV, you just get this feeling when you walk over here, you can just feel the presence of something here. I don't know what it is, but there is definitely something here. The entity had returned and continues to this day. like solid masses of light that are glowing intensely. No insects ever looked like this or looked like this to my knowledge. And the videos look like a chain of light, spheres of light, very bright, I'd say, um, light enough to illuminate a dark room quite vividly. 
moving about the room quite rapidly and captured on real-time video and in 35 millimeter. So again, we're dealing with something that is totally inexplicable, yet was photogenic at the time, it was visual at the time, which means that it was seen and photographed simultaneously, which is very rare. But on the frequency at which this phenomenon is being recorded in this case is unique, because most cases you get something once or twice, but not 10, 12, 15, 20 times. And it's almost like the, this phenomena, at some level, wants to make us aware of its presence, whatever it is. The film that I saw at Barry's when they did uh, a careful freeze frame and uh, frame enhancement, um, uh, this thing appeared to know where it was going. had a, a, a shot um, of the gate as um, the lady approached it, the gate appeared to open by itself, and at the same time, uh, there was a little, uh, little field of, of light energy um, that played on the gate for a minute and then kind of swerved off and left the picture. As far as insects go, there's nothing that would be that bright and that glowing. Uh, also, there's doesn't the appearance of the shadows and things like that. It just doesn't seem right. These things seem to be self-illuminated. So insects outside of fireflies, which don't occur here, are not self-illuminating. You couldn't you. It was impossible to look at it and not think that this, this thing didn't have some life force behind it. Yeah, startling. One of the more most intriguing or more intriguing aspects of the case is that um, Jackie Hernandez, uh, having uh, possession of a camera of her own, uh, was able to photograph phenomena which was visual, visual to her at the time, and it was also photogenic. These were, for lack of a better term, corpuscular masses of light that were moving about the ceiling. These are not reflections or artifacts of the lens of the camera. We examine the negatives, and these cannot be explained by any nature. Um, or any phenomena that we're familiar with, at least in science. I've seen quite a bit of Barry Conrad's tapes. As a matter of fact, I think they represented uh, many, many months of uh, investigation. And there was a common feature that I saw that was the one single thing that really caught my eye, and that was the streaks of light. Uh, and I looked very carefully over the films, over uh, many visits with Barry, and looked for uh, common features and dissimilar features. And some of the things uh, were very unique. Uh, number one was the fact that every time uh, there was a presence of the lights, or the streaks of lights, was definitely a three-dimensionality. They were either in the foreground or the background, and you could tell very distinctly, in depth, where these lights were in the field. And uh, their nature was, was uh, very unique. They would typically uh, move along the screen and take maybe three or four or five frames very quickly, would cross the uh, field of view. And if they were in the background, if they went behind uh, a head, for example, you definitely saw the fact that it was in the background, in the foreground, it would come right in front. It would never cast a shadow. This was something I thought was very unique in that Barry in, indoors use, used a, a very powerful light because you could see uh, shadows cast uh, by people and objects. And I looked very closely for the presence of shadows cast by the streaks of light. And we looked in slow motion 
and there was uh, in, in dozens, literally dozens of occurrences indoors that I saw, there was never any presence of any shadow, as if it was a solid object uh, in its own right. And uh, I'm convinced that it is self-illuminating, it generates its own light. Ooh, a light, a light, a light, a light. That same light I saw before. I got a picture of it. I think I got about three or four good shots of it. It's going around on the kitchen ceiling, and there's a light film of smoke up there, and I don't know where the smoke is coming from, but I got the lights that have been zooming around. There's been light beams that on the dancing around on the ceiling, and then there was also a shape form. So I looked up here, and there's a little light that was going around and around and around real, real fast, and then another, it kind of like broke in half just like a cell would would divide. There was one uh, light occurrence which was uh, actually very unique compared to uh, the streaks of light and this occurred the first evening, I believe, that uh, Jeff and Barry Conrad were at the house in San Pedro, there was a very unique uh, flash of light. This was different than what we've seen before. And what was uh, very unique about it is it only covered, it was like a blue light, very distinctively blue, that had a very sharp boundary about uh, midway in his torso. To determine whether it was real or not, I noticed on his glasses that there was a reflection of the blue light. When we ran the tape two or three times, the light that was here with a very distinct boundary was also reflected in Jeff's uh, glasses, which indicated to me that it was a uh, true occurrence of a flash, but the uniqueness of the flash again was the very sharp boundary And the light also had the boundary right midway in the microphone, which is very unusual if a light was just uh, from a flash, from a flash bulb or a flashlight. It usually spreads out and you would not find such a ba uh, sharp boundary or such a distinct blue color as we saw. That was a very unique, I think, light occurrence. This is an occurrence. This is, this is something that is uh, real and not quite easily explained. There's such a, a, a large volume of information Barry has on all of his tapes with regard to these streaks of light that uh, other scientists besides myself would be, uh, I would think, interested in looking at the tapes and making an assessment for themselves, you know, opinion as to what they may think they are, if they can have an explanation or determine uh, what they may possibly be. I myself um, am stumped. I've been a, a professional physicist uh, for 20 years now and uh, have not seen anything like this. It's like colored the rest of my life. That's what it did, it colored. It colored the rest of my life where um, no matter what I was doing, this knowledge of this thing that was going on was always there foremost in my mind, and there was no place to put it. Where, I, where are you going to put, you know, someone, uh, someone, uh, um, I mean, furniture flying and, and, and smells and voices and things drooling down on the walls and, and puddles of blood plasma appearing on the floor out of nowhere. Where are you going to put all that? There's nowhere to put it. You just never can file it away. I was leaning over just like this, 
and two hands it felt like they were coming like this and it, it felt like it was it was trying to push and i just fell on screen and then it just like it, it was almost like it turned and ran away mm -hmm. that's what it felt like like it turned and ran away like i could feel i could hear the footprints running a couple steps away mm -hmm. phenomena whatever it is whether we're dealing with a ghost discarnate intelligence or some kind of psychokinetic manifestation from a poltergeist agent is that it appears to be displaying belligerent or malevolent behavior towards the researchers in some respect. And in this particular case, it's toward Jeff Wheatcraft, one of the photographers. Whoa, 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 whoa. you all right? You all right? Whoa, you okay? What happened? What happened? Wait, wait, what happened? What happened just now? Hey, you were just pushed just now? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I told Gary that there was nothing happening up there, and he turned around and came. He was coming this way. All of a sudden, I feel, feel this thing around my neck, and it's got me hanging, hanging, and it's pulling on my leg. You were hanging? Yeah, I was hanging. I took the first step, and then all of a sudden, I remember that there was this tightness around my neck, and I was being pulled over to the side of the attic next to the rafter. I really, at that point, didn't know that there was something around my neck. However, uh, there was actually a small uh, clothesline rope that was around my neck, and it was tied. Uh, it was twisted and then hung on a nail on the, on, the, on the rafter in the attic. This is the rope, or plastic. It looks like it's clothesline, but it doesn't look that, like it's that old. And it's tied together. It's soft, pliable somewhat pliable, so you know it's not cracking, it's not all that old, but it is tied together like this. It ended up over my head like this, and then it was twisted like this. I don't know how far or to what degree, but I know it was twisted because it was tied around my neck. And then it was hung up over the nail on one of the cross members that go across the attic. In the history of investigating this type of phenomena, ghosts, apparitions, uh, uh, hauntings, poltergeist activity, there's been a handful of cases that have displayed continued or direct belligerent malevolent behavior, and this is one of them. And the fact that it's occurred repeatedly to the same person makes even that more important. Did you see an entity moving in the darkness of the attic on the first night of your visit? Yes. Oh, shit. What? what? Saw it again? <laughs> what? what? There's something moving in the darkness, and I can just see it move. It's huge. Barry, I don't know what it Barry, is. you saw something moving in the darkness. So, why don't you get up here and can you put your head through? There's a light again. There's a light again. How a boisterous analyzer works, basically, in very small terms, is that uh, it, it counts the micro tremblers in your vocal cords. Uh, as somebody speaks, their vocal cords vibrate. In other words, when you were a child and somebody asked you if you've stolen anything, you would say, uh, uh, no. That's an uncontrollable response of the vocal cords. As we grow up and become adults, we learn to control that response. We can say, no vocal cords are still vibrating. Uh, if you're not telling the truth, they'll vibrate more times per second, basically is how it works. Has an entity ever inflicted pain upon you while living in this house on 11th Street? Yes. After the results of these tests came in from the VSA, um, I studied them myself. They were also studied by a couple of other individuals. Um, the tests were truthful. They, the answers were truthful. Um, some of the questions, did you see flying balls of light? Um, were there unknown forces there pushing you? Um, was some, did something hang you in the attic? These answers, were, these questions were all answered truthfully, and I have to believe by the results of my tests that uh, these people were telling the truth. Another particular event that occurred that was quite unusual is that when Barry Conway was filming in the kitchen um, one evening, Something, for lack of a term, knocked him unconscious. Oh, watch, he's going to pass out. Set the camera down. Set the camera down. Sit him down. Sit him down. Sit him down. It's fearful of something. It doesn't want you to be here. What's going to happen next? What's it going to do to me? Something very, very unusual is transpiring here, and I think that we that, that this is something that cannot be ignored. We're dealing with a force of nature beyond anything we currently even comprehend, let alone willing to accept. We are what we're experiencing in this particular investigation, as we have as many and many others, but not to this degree, is effect without known cause. And that is that physical phenomena is transpiring that we're observing, that we're documenting through you know videotaping through 35 millimeter uh, cameras and it was, is affecting human lives, meaning it's affecting human physicality, and yet it, there is no known cause. So that is termed magic. That's the way uh, Isaac Asimov and Arthur C. Clarke define magic. But this isn't magic, this is real. It's affecting a real, tangible reality, a real, tangible world. Is it some discarnate remnant or intelligence of a person that lived before that's malevolent or belligerent? People talked about, well, are people say, are ghosts good or bad? Um, is this phenomenon good or bad? Well, people are good and bad. If this is an extension of the human psyche that survives physical death, if people are good and bad, then I guess this consciousness can be good or bad. We don't know what we're dealing with. If 
man, it's getting very hard to even be here. I feel like just packing up the kids and going to Texas right now. I'm really scared. How far am I going to test it? How far is it going to go until I, you know, realize, hey, it doesn't want me here? You know? Ah! A Pepsi just got hurled at me. 